Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to do a greenhouse tour to show you what's in bud and what's in bloom in my greenhouse for January. But before we get started on that, I just wanted to um, announce that this is a special video for me. Uh, my channel has hit 5,000 subscribers and I would like to thank you guys for all your support. I can't believe um, we made it to 5,000 subscribers. I look back, this time last year I had about 35 subscribers. So it's been a big year for me. Um, lots of good growth, lots of good interaction with you guys. I've really enjoyed growing with you and getting to know all you guys. I love your comments and your feedback. And um, yeah, I'm glad you guys like my videos as well. So there's going to be lots in store for 2014. The videos are going to keep coming. Um, I started a second channel as well. If you guys didn't know, I have a little one on the way. So... Um, there's going to be a few changes, but videos are definitely going to keep coming. And in fact, hopefully early this spring, we are going to take this 8x12 greenhouse and turn it into something much, much bigger. I'm hoping for more space, more head height, bigger, longer, taller, everything like that. I've got some of the um, product already here. Um, got polycarbonate for Christmas, so that's a good start. That's the, the majority of the project right there. Um, so now we just got to complete the design and figure out um, how I'm going to do this because I'm not a builder. But um, yeah, I'll bring you guys along for that. So with a bigger greenhouse, there's going to be space for more plants, bigger plants, hopefully a bunch of different kinds of plants. I want to get into some bromeliads and other stuff that I um, haven't been able to just because I don't have the space for them. Um, on another note regarding this, since I was thinking what I could do for my 5,000 subscribers. Um, I was trying to rack my brain as to what I could thank you with or give to you or help you with. So that sort of thing. And I decided I can't ship plants. They're not going to leave Canada. And I want this to be a, a bigger than just a Canada thing. So I'm going to have a little contest here. And that goes for seeds as well, unfortunately. What I'm going to do is, as a thank you, I'm going to give away a couple awesome books. So I have two books here. It's going to be one sort of gift going to one person. These are fantastic books. Um, book. This book here is Cataleas and Other Epiphytes. Great knowledge in the book. Beautiful pictures. And I think a lot of you guys will like this book here. Vandas, Dendrobiums, and Others. So again, beautiful book. Lots of wonderful pictures in the book. There's... um. Dendrobium nobilis that we just did the video on. So it has lots of care culture for that. Between these two books, there's tons of information in here. They are used books. They're my books. I have um, had my time with them, so I'm going to pass them off to you guys. And what I want you guys to do, if you're interested in these books, just leave a comment below. Um, feel free to like and share as well. But what I'm going to do is just count up the names each name is going to get a number and I'm going to do the random generator with Google and we're going to select a winner just randomly like that. It doesn't matter what country you are in. What I'm going to do, these are free to charge and I'm going to do free shipping on them. It may be the slow boat, but you will eventually get these two books. So leave me a comment. If you guys share the video, I'll give you an extra um, point on there and you'll have two chances to win these two great books. So we have this one here, Vandas, Dendrobiums, and others, and Cataleas and other epiphytes. I think both of them are going to come in handy for any orchid grower. As I say, fantastic books. They are used. They're from my collection. But as long as you don't mind a few nicks and scratches and wear and tear, they are um, up for grabs. So with that being said, um, if I have any other contest rules or stipulations that I miss because I'm just um, I don't script any of my videos I'm just talking away so I'm gonna put um, a the the sort of contest in the description below and yeah talk away I love it um, the more comments the better but anyways why don't we have a tour of the greenhouse now okay so these plants aren't going to be in any particular order I am going to do a just a greenhouse tour and everything that we got going on in here so I might as well start and start right here at these points so I have some sundews they're coming out in bloom these are capensis sundews there's my only utricularia 
This group of orchids over here are small dendrobium types that need a winter rest. I kind of have clumped them together so that um, I don't get mixed up and water them. Um, Maxillaria is coming out in bloom. Well, in spike. You can see all the little dark points there. Those are spikes. A little miniature Oncidium here. That is called the Hawiria Lava Burst, I believe. It's coming out in spike as well. Um, I'm going to toggle lights on and off depending on the shot here. So, here is a slipper orchid. This is an alba form of the warm growing just hybrids, the Modier type. We've actually repotted this um, together. We repotted this not too many months ago. And it had no spikes on it at the time, but now you have one, two, and I see a third little one coming up there. And without turning it around, we have three spikes on that guy. This plant I am super excited about. It is another slipper orchid. It is a Venustum venestum. It is the, I bought this as a tiny seedling and this is its first bloom for me. So I had to grow out the little fan. It had one fan. And yeah, so far so good. There it comes. I have two new fans growing on it as well. We have got a Nepenthes here. This is a great uh, beginner Nepenthes. This one is just a Ventricosa. It's gone into vining, so it's forming these cute little pictures up here. And it's got a basal shoot here on it that's forming some nice lower pictures as well. Up above, we have a Sanguiana. Again, a great beginner um, plant. These can grow in the house. They can grow in the greenhouse. They can take temperatures from like 50 to 85 degrees. It's got a few little basils in there, so you can see some cute little um, pictures starting underneath. So that's good, it'll kind of bush it out a bit. We have a Truncata, Bongso here. We got this little guy in the summer. Nice little um, lower picture there. It's his first one with a nice uh, peristome. A couple new ones there, a couple crosses. That is Edwardsonia, Berbiciae, cross with Edwardsonia. This one here is a Hamada Platycyla cross. They haven't done a whole lot. Moving this way, the King Sundews. I'll turn this off here. Bear with me while I find the switch. There we go. That might have helped. Okay, so we have a couple pots of King Sundews. This guy back here is one I've never actually done a video on. This is a Chinese Cymbidium. And look at this. It's in spike. Chinese Cymbidium. Three spikes on it. One here. Oops, there's so much in the way here. This is why I need a bigger greenhouse, because it's really crowded. So, but anyways, three spikes. There's another Chinese Cymbidium. No spikes. Another path. This is one of those bubblegum type paths. They have a big lower lip. I'm definitely going to do a video on that, so don't worry about that. That's coming up. This area right here, in front of us now, is where I put any of the plants that are in spike that I really need to be careful with so they don't get bumped. So we have some Ontoglossidiums. Um, what else do we have? Dendrobium kingianum. It's starting to actually even color up. You can see the pink color through the, um, the buds now, if I can focus on that, which of course I can't. Come on. There we go. And it's got quite a few spikes on it. There's another spike over here from it. Um, an Oncidium. This one is called a Tahitian Dancer. Little purple flowers. Lots of spikes from that one. Three or four spikes. This Phalaenopsis has just opened. Nice little Phalaenopsis there. A little. It's quite big. It's way down there. Huge spike on it. I really like the um, blotchy kind of colors. Uh, this is a sherry baby, so that's nice. Great big spike on that one. Some more Oncidium spikes back here. These are Wilson areas. This is a Zygopetalum here, so that's nice and in spike. Hopefully I'm keeping it in focus. There's so much in, in the way the camera doesn't even know what I'm looking at here. Down below, here are my Cymbidiums. So there I'm growing away. I'll take you down to this guy here. This is the Cymbidium we did the uh, video on where we staked it. The um, spikes are coming along quite nice. They're almost to the top of the, the stakes now. You can see that one back there, I'm noticing is to the top of the bench. 
So those will be, um, they're maturing really rapidly actually. All right, I'll take you back up. Another Nepenthes here. This is a Sibuensis. It's really slow to picture, but when it pitchers, they're great big ones. Look at that. That's a big picture. Great big picture. Got a little basil shoot down below as well. I just pulled this guy out. I pulled a lot of orchids out so you can see them. Some Mastavalias in spike. If you ever wonder why I have bowls of water and stuff like that, these are usually freshwater bowls. So I can water plants. So I try to keep the greenhouse drier. So this is a good way to water Mastavalia. Take a turkey baster and do that a couple times. That way the water doesn't go everywhere. And I always just keep pure water in these ones so I can do the same with carnivorous plants. And that's um, why that one's more just a, a basin of fresh water. So again, I can take the turkey baster and go up and go in every plant without actually turning on the hose. And all I do is I give them a the sort of preset turkey baster amount. And I will do that every day. But you can see how quick it is to um, do a whole bunch of plants. Now we're going to hear the dripping noise, but so it's a good, accurate way to water the plants without getting the leaves wet and without spreading too much water everywhere. All right, moving up. There's a Miltoniopsis bud up here, uh, really high. There's Phalaenopsis bud from that plant right here. Uh, seeds are up here, Nepenthes seeds. We've had a bit of germination and cephalota seeds. We've had quite a bit of germination on those. Swinging over here, this is a Tillandsia, an air plant. We did a video on these guys not too long ago. It has a bud coming in the center of that right now, so I'm really excited about that. This Tillandsia, it bloomed last year, and these are seed pods. So I'm just letting the seed pods mature, and then we're going to do a video on planting Tillandsia seed pods. We'll do it together. I've never done it before, so We'll see if we have any success with that. Cephalotus seedlings. They're doing quite well. They're looking like little cephalotus now. Some of them are still really tiny. At the end of the little red plastic piece there is a cephalotus. So various sizes. Cephalotus root and leaf pullings. I think this leaf here grew that plant there. Sundew root cuttings. These are some of my tools of the trade. Maybe it'll focus on it, maybe it won't. On these kind of things, I usually have a white background, so it actually focuses. I use my um, white trays a lot. So a good pair of surgical scissors to get in there and remove leaves. A good pair of really fine tweezers. You never know when you're going to... Here, let's see if I can get against the background here. You never know when you're going to um, need to pick up something really fine and really tiny little scissors. You never know when you're gonna have to cut off a little tiny leaf and you don't want to be using like these big cumbersome scissors here to cut off like a little tiny cephalotus picture that's that's dried up. So I use those tools all the time. Up here is my butterworts. We just did a video on those so you're fairly familiar with those if you subscribe to my channel. Down here are all my Nepenthes and Heliamphora seedlings. I wouldn't really call them seedlings anymore, but um, they're growing well. I'm not going to take you through all of them, but Heliamphora live at the back. And Nepenthes live at the front. All kinds of varieties. A couple low eyes there. They're putting on their first pictures for me. Macrophylla I'm quite happy about. Just did a video on the Hamada there. So it's got its first picture. I brought out some cephalotus to show you. These are a type of carnivorous plant from Australia. Beautiful little things. They don't get huge. So you can see the size of the pitcher. They're about the size of my finger. There's one with a big pitcher just about to open. A couple different heliamphoras getting some adult pitchers now. When I got them, they only had um, juvenile pitchers. Chimensis, Chimentensis, and Heterodoxa. If you watch my channel much, you know I'm horrible with Latin names. This was the little guy I was holding in the beginning of the, the video here. This one is an Ontocidium. So it's like an um, 
uh, Oncidium, but it likes cool, moist conditions. It grows better with Mastavalias than it does with um, Oncidiums. But beautiful flowers on it, kind of taggery striped, nothing huge. Another Phalaenopsis in spike. Here's some Mastavalias in bloom. I usually don't um, pull out the Mastavalias to show you guys very often. But they're beautiful plants. I love them. The um, the colors they produce are just amazing. There's a purple guy there. So They just like uh, cooler, moister conditions, so works out well. This is another Mastavalia here. Look at the funny shape on that guy. Just a bizarre looking thing. Kind of um, tubular looking. It's just about finished blooming now. I'm going to raise the camera up. This is an Oncidium Twinkle that I just took out of focus. As I say, there's so much going on right now, the camera doesn't know what to look at. This is an awesome little white Phalaenopsis. It's in bloom. It's got a couple spikes on it. But it is awesome because of the roots. These roots are like Vander roots. Look at how they just hang down off the pot. So this is in one of those hanging pots that I showed you guys how to make um, last week. Lilia and Seps. I have one of these in the house. It's just about to bloom. I'll do a video on these guys. They're in the Catalea Alliance. They're a very, very hardy orchid. You can't go wrong with the Lilia and Seps. Um, another Phalaenopsis in spike. Catalea down there. I bumped one of the flowers. It fell off. Well, it didn't fall off. It got ripped off. But such is life. Here is a close-up of these two books. Catalea and other epiphytes and growing dendrobiums, vandas and other orchids. Here is a sherry baby. It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The greenhouse smells like sherry baby right now. I love it. This has got to be one of my favorite orchids. I have three or four of them now. Yep, I would um, love to have enough so I always have these in bloom all the time. There is a Vanda Orchid. Can't see it because of the backlighting there. Sorry about that. Let's see if this helps at all. It's a red Vanda. Covered in Spanish moss here. The roots are all in the Spanish moss. I don't know if it helps, it hinders it, but it's there. So when I water the roots, I gotta water the Spanish moss too. Somebody was just asking if uh, my Vandas uh, suffer in the winter time in here with the cooler temperatures. And they do a little bit because it's down in the 55s at night. But I also tried potting some up and they're in the house as opposed to hanging out here. They're doing fabulous in the house too. So that's definitely worth uh, a video of mine too. That's um, one of the ideas that I'm going to do shortly for you. There are the two Nobly Dendrobiums. Here is a Spectabili. It's losing all its pictures. It's just the time of year, but it's got a whole bunch of basils down here. They have pictures still. So it's coming along nice. It's in bloom as well. Lycastes are all down here. Miltoniopsis. All the Mastavalias are down there. They're all starting to come up in spike now. Winter time is the time that they um, send up their spikes when it's nice and cool. And yeah, that is a greenhouse tour for January. So lots in spike, a few things in bloom. We're going to have um, lots of blooms this spring and summer, that's for sure. Hope you guys tag along for that. I'll definitely be doing lots more videos on it. But anyways, I hope you like this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Check out this book giveaway as well. It's, as I say, open to everyone and free shipping, so no cost to you guys whatsoever as long as you don't mind used books. Alright guys, thanks for watching.